Hey, welcome to another episode of Throttle Stop Garage. In this episode, we're going to have a look at two things. One, how to finish your carbon fiber parts, and two, what did all this cost? Okay, so over the past year, I've been making carbon fiber parts again. Never thought it was going to take this long. In my own, in my own little ignorant mind, I thought it was going to be just a few months. I thought, oh, I'll oh, make a few molds, pop some carbon fiber parts out, no problem. A little over a year later, and I've just finished it up. So step number one on the finishing process is going to be to take all the parts off of the car, put them into uh, an oven that I've constructed, and then uh, heat them. All right, so we raise the temperature up to about 80 degrees Celsius. We hold it there for eight full hours. Uh, and then after that, the epoxy has reached its full strength and the cure is finished. In the case of the epoxy that we're using, we actually gain quite a bit more strength for the part uh, and I'll post the numbers, if you like, down in the description below, uh, but it increases the strength by 30, 40%. So it is significant and it is really worth doing. So what we're going to do today is we're going to put, well actually over that about the next week, we're going to take all of our carbon fiber parts that we've made, so doors, trunks, hoods, the fenders have already been done, nose section, all of those parts have got to go through a heat cycle in my giant oven. Now the oven was simply constructed from uh, a little bit of wood and some of that foil uh, insulation that you can get down at your local hardware store, that and a small uh, garage furnace, right? So a small heater is used underneath it. All the parts are put on top of tables. We'll show you that in a sec. And then we carefully raise the temperature. We get it up to about 80 degrees Celsius in there. And then we hold it there for eight hours. When we do that, we'll achieve the final uh, strength that we need. Let's see up here into where the carbon is. Okay, before we get going too far and I uh, forget to do everything, the oven has been working here all week, so you can see that I've got the carbon fiber parts that I was making all winter. These ones are done. Just the uh, hood and the trunk to go. There's the front of the car all put together and we had uh, zero issues with the parts. So if someone out there is going to tell me that uh, you have to put the parts back in the mold. Uh, I've not done that with this and I've had no issues with it. So the hood came out exactly out of the oven after spending eight hours at 80 degrees Celsius and it's uh, every bit as good as it was when I put it in. So no problems there. And we're still not done body work on this. This is just the final cure. Almost sad to see the great big foil oven go, but honestly, it just took up so much room in my garage that, I mean, literally the area you see me working in there is pretty much all I had left, just a few feet uh, that I could walk around in, which was not going to work for putting the rest of this car together. So off the foil comes, I just used some staples to put it on there, the foiled uh, backing, and I rolled it up, stuck it up in the rafters. In the meantime, the framing came apart really easily, and then the tables just fold up and I can put them away anytime I like. So I've been saving all the parts up just to lay them out. I always wanted to do this, lay them out on the parking spot behind my garage and have a look at how much work I've done. Uh, and after I was done that, I uh, opened up the trunk of the old wagon, stuff it all in and take it to the junkyard. Uh, so it took a couple of days in order to get that done. And now we've got the oven uh, completely taken apart and I've got epic piles of space. It's been one year that I've had this stuff in my in my way in the garage, so actually uh, feeling a lot better about my workspace right now. Okay, of all the questions that I get asked in the comments, the most common one all the time is, what did this cost? People are interested in, oh, how much did the hood cost? How much did the fenders cost? All the various bits and pieces. And the truth is, it's really difficult to total it all because of the length of time. I saved for years in order to have enough money in the bank in order to get these parts. Uh, again, I'm in Canada. I have to order stuff from the United States. Uh, this gets to be pretty hilarious for Canadians over time uh, as we have to deal with uh, dollar values going up and down, uh, shipping, which is hilarious. Every Canadian and complains about shipping, uh, you know who you are. Uh, it seems like we all live on the border, but we can't get anything across the border. Uh, and it's been very difficult, actually. So initially, I purchased a lot of stuff 
quite a while ago actually because the dollar was up and the time was right so I purchased the material actually a year in advance of even starting to make the parts. So the truth is that um, the first bill from Composite Envisions I bought most of the material and uh, the epoxy and all the other stuff the peel ply the mesh the this that and the other that I needed to do the like the wedges all that kind of stuff I bought that all in one go and the grand total is about three thousand five hundred dollars US which boy that hurt we won't even convert it to Canadian dollars for you there's uh there's no point anyway so that was the first bill uh, and then molds you know, when you're building molds, it's going to cost about roughly half of what you would spend uh, to just get the carbon fiber purchase. So I figure I've got about 2,500 worth of materials. And I discovered over time that, uh, you know, basically if you work it out, it's a lot cheaper to buy mold making materials from somebody like Composite Envisions. In fact, I started buying... The, car, the chop strand mat uh, from a seller on eBay. It's about the cheapest that I've found. So there's a top tip for you. And um, I just love this section. It's so epic. It was so hard to get this out of here. Anyway, <laughs> and then another one pops. But uh, so yeah, so you've got uh, that totaled. And then there's the other stuff that you need, okay? So I got really lucky with the vacuum pump. And I got a very good vacuum pump for only a uh, hundred dollars uh, and you know what spend money on a really good vacuum pump uh, a cheap vacuum pump and i have one a cheap one and they're just not worth the trouble okay so they're just they're terrible buy a nice one it'll cost you seven hundred dollars but when you're done with it you can sell it for almost exactly what you paid for it right i mean they do hold their value uh, and then there's all the other little sundry things, body fillers and other bits and pieces. And by the time I total up all of those bills, uh, I am now up to uh, probably in the neighborhood of seven to eight thousand dollars US total. Now, these parts are not available in the aftermarket. I can't buy them uh, the way I want them. And you sort of do what you have to do. Now, given the number of parts that I made, remember there's only the quarters and the roof panel on this car that are not carbon fiber. So that's uh, that's pretty reasonable, I think. Anyway, no, it's not reasonable. None of this makes any sense. If you have to make it make financial sense, then you're going to be making parts for people, something which I don't do. And uh, it's just something that you have to do because you want to do it. It can't be, you know, this is not economical, folks. Like, don't kid yourself. Anyway, just a few more minutes of me popping parts. That just look at that door. Look at the shine on the door. Uh, just love that. Just love it. The grand total out the door. Uh, so I figure it's somewhere around $8,500. But that is uh, two fenders, a hood, two doors, a trunk. Uh, all the inner structures, all the other inner parts done completely in carbon fiber. And these are all overbuilt. Again, you could probably do it for a little bit less than that if you're trying to do a complete car. But, uh, and then a year's worth of time. What's that worth? Apparently, not much. Uh, anyway, so thank you very much for tuning into this video. Really appreciate the, the views, uh, likes would be great. It always helps the videos actually, uh, gets them up on the YouTube uh, watch chart. And um, stay safe. I've got a couple more quick ones coming up. Um, but thanks for tuning in. And we'll catch you on the next episode.